What happens when everything you know suddenly changes? At 36, I almost lost my ongoing battle with addiction, depression, and anxiety. My rock bottom ultimately came waking up on my office floor surrounded by paramedics and tubes. I remember wanting to die on the helicopter ride to the hospital. My dreams and reputation were over. But there's one thing I learned in my lifetime. It's that adversity reveals character. And this is my redemption story. I never gave up because I knew that there wouldn't be mountains without valleys. You can do anything at any age as long as you believe. If I can recover from opioid addiction, depression, and deep anxiety, then you can get through your valleys too. I've got another shot of my redemption story and I'll never let it go. I know this journey won't be easy, but taking the easy road just really isn't my thing. Welcome to the Indoor Cycling Channel, the global community for indoor cycling and spinning. Every week we feature badass studios and rock star instructors. And you also get spin classes absolutely free. So hit the subscribe button to avoid missing the world's greatest studios and instructors. And don't forget to like and share. Back everyone to Indoor Cycling Channel. It's me again, Annie. I'm back with another fantastic spin instructor that I'm going to put in the hot seat and interrogate. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be no tears. I reckon our guest today can handle it. Uh, but if you're new here, if you don't know what this is, then make sure you subscribe. This is the home of all things spinning and indoor cycling. And we do so much on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you keep watching all of the amazing content like this interview right here with Billy. Everyone say hi, Billy. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, everyone. Thanks, Annie, for having me. Not a problem. It is our pleasure. So I always like to start off with the easy questions, easy win, and then bully you a little bit later on down the line. <laughs> so first things first, where do you offer indoor cycling? So I offer indoor cycling in a town called Natick, Massachusetts. It's about 25 minutes west outside of Boston. Um, and it's, uh, it's a small town outside of Boston. And uh, yeah, close to the Chestnut Hill area. And uh, it's brand new, just started about three months ago. Fantastic. Now, everyone, we did have a little bit of a, a conversation prior, so I kind of know a little bit about Billy. And um, we spoke about the area, and you said it's quite saturated in your area. Is it how big is spin in your area? Uh, it's very big, and it's growing. Um, there are a bunch of other studios that do very well. Um, other companies, other brands um, that have started you know within the last five to seven years and already have multiple locations um, so it is very popular and even with the pandemic um, it's even gotten more popular people have purchased their pelotons and and i'm really excited about the opportunity because um it was popular as is spinning and, and it's continuing to grow but like i said i think the pandemic forced people to get their pelotons try it at home but now that it's healthy to get back out there, they want that indoor studio experience. And uh, so I think I'm opening at the right time. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think that you, because we, like I said, we would, I was digging into what you do and you want to be a little bit different. You don't want to be a run of the mill, dare I say, cycling studio. You want to do something a little bit different. So tell me what is the, the ethos of you and your company? Uh, so I only can be myself. I only can be my authentic self. Um, and before I started my own company, I, I worked for SoulCycle. I was a SoulCycle instructor. And I learned so much about the industry that way. They were the industry leader. Um, and like I said, there are a bunch of other studios um, in, in or around where I, where I teach. Um, however, um, when I was teaching at SoulCycle, I found that... Um, you know, people were coming in with 200, 300, 400 rides, even a thousand rides for a few people. Um, and I really wanted to find the next step. I, I, I saw the writing on the wall. I saw how popular this was becoming. 
And I knew how new the industry was. Boutique fitness, spinning, it's only 10, 15 years max. And there's so much room for growth, in my opinion. So um, I said, you know, Billy, um, you're an athletic rider. Um, you've worked your way up. Um, um, you're, a, you're an athlete. You like to challenge yourselves. Why don't you find your niche, be yourself, and offer the next level advanced class? Um, in my opinion, um, a lot of the other spin studios out there that are fantastic, that are doing well, um, are the Walmart necessarily or the Costco. You know, they're the name brand. You know, they cater to everyone, which is fantastic, absolutely. But I really wanted to give something, to offer something to that next level rider who wanted to be pushed. Um, in my background, um, I was, before becoming a spin instructor, I was a high school administrator and a high school coach. I coached many sports. And I really wanted um, to coach my riders like a coach would coach on the sidelines. You know, um, find your inner athlete. Let's work hard. Um, always with a smile on my face, but maybe just a little more intense, you know, um, and just pushing you that effort, that extra step, because I want you, I want you to get better every class. So if you follow that model, by the time you hit a hundred rides, 200, 300, 400, you are going to be looking for something different, the next step. Um, and I almost think it's hurting my business in a little way, just because, um, I'm being real specific, you know, and I'm really targeting a certain um, type of rider. Um, but like I said, it's, it's who I am. It's my authentic self. I wouldn't have it any other way. And um, I think the Boston market is, although saturated, like I said, um, I think it's waiting for something like this. So... Yeah. Well, that's the perfect thing, isn't it? You're, there are so many locations that are only just discovering spin, that there's only like one gym that offers it, you know, in the back room or whatever. But when you're in your situation where it is so popular, there are so many people, people are going to want something a little bit different. They're always going to want to push. And if there's one thing I've learned about people who do spin is that they are always striving for something else the dedication that people go you know the journeys that people go and so you and your niche I say niche you say niche there you go English <laughs> is you and your niche I'll, I'll translate for you um is is the next step so saying that a lot of people don't know what that next step is what is it that you do that is different Sure. Um, uh, okay. So, um, I like to go rogue sometimes. Um, a lot of, a lot of playlists and a lot of class structures, um, are, they follow a curve. Okay. Where, where you start kind of slower with some resistance. And as you go, you take a little off and you follow, 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 and then you finish fast, um, to the end. I like to, um, surprise my riders. I like to, um, offer a different experience every class. Um, I like to go a little faster. Um, I like to um, use advanced choreography. I, I like to make my class um, fun in a way that they see what's happening in front of them and they say, wow, this seems really, really difficult. But if I just take a step every class to get there one step at a time, um, I can finally get there. I wanna show them visualize them um, that these moves, these speeds, these cadences are po are possible, um, but there's steps to get there, like I said. And um, um, whether it's staying in the saddle and just finding the cadence in the saddle, which is hard enough, um, I'd rather have you do that than um, be out of the saddle and not really on beat, but just because I'm out of the saddle, you're out of the saddle, you know? Um, so my, the type of music, the speeds, um, uh, resistance we use during speeds. Um, yeah, that, that, and, and again, I, I'm a big dancer as far as choreography goes. I like challenge. <laughs> yeah, I like challenging um, different moves and things like that, things that people haven't seen yet before. Um, 
And like I said, we have to manifest it. You have to see it first. And once you see it, then you can accomplish it. So I kind of want to show people some things they've never seen before. Fantastic. Yeah. So you're, excuse the pun, but you want to reinvent the wheel, let's say, which is what I'm totally on board I've with. I've used that once before. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, we're on the same wavelength. We know. Um, okay. So I want to touch on something that you brought up, your coaching. So what, yeah. what is your coaching history? Because obviously that all plays into motivation when you're in that studio and on that bike. So what did you do and what's kind of your styling? Uh, so I have over 12 years of high school varsity coaching experience, both, both genders. I've coached girls varsity soccer, boys varsity baseball, uh, boys JV basketball. Done that for years. Um, taught in the classroom as well. Um, and uh, I like to use those type of learning while playing sports, learning while um, I call it character driven athletics. And um, when you're on the playing field, you're dealing with adversity constantly and you're, and you're dealing it not with just by yourself, but with a team um, and sports reveal character and adversity reveals character. And so when we're on a hill or we're on a sprint or run or something like that, um, I use that as a metaphor, um, whether you're on the playing field or whether you're dealing with issues in life, um, that, you know, this struggle um, not only is going to make you this hill that we're climbing, it's not only going to make you a better rider, but it's going to make you like a, a better person because you're, you're challenging yourself um, to handle this adversity and you're training your mind mentally to say, okay, this hill sucks right now, but what am I going to do? Am I going to sit down? Am I going to take a little off right now? Um, and if I can train my body, uh, to handle this adversity right now and to handle this challenge right now, then I'm not only going to get physically strong, but I'm going to get mentally strong um, to not shy away when life hits me in the face outside the studio or something like that. Um, I like to call my classes, you know, trainings or practices rather than classes, if you will, because that's what it is. When that door closes, um, you're there with your team. Um, you're pushing each other in a way you're competing each with each other in a way, but not in a, a rivalry type situation. It's more of, um, we know how to practice together as a unit and we know how to push each other a little bit. Um, and it's only going to make a strong, a stronger. Um, and even though we're racing together or riding together, um, we all are on our separate individual journeys. We're all on different wavelengths as far as skill and abilities and things like that. Um, but the one speed and the one thing we can control, the two things we can control is our attitude when we're in the room and the effort we put forth. Um, and yeah, I love that. Um, um, so to me, it's somewhat like a team and, and, you know, coaching, um, having that background, um, being the leader in the room um, and coaching in a team environment, I, it definitely is rel related to me. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> now, what I want to know, because this, I'm, I'm trying to think of parallels of like past life and now, because obviously yeah. coaching a team of kids who are yes. figuring out so much in life. And I always think it's, it's in some ways being a kid was so much easier than adulthood. Adulting is very difficult, but obviously in, in a kid's eyes, when they're trying to play in a team, they're trying to handle their social life, they're trying to be popular at school and get all the right grades and all of that stress that's on their shoulders. What do you think we can take from your experience with those kids and, and, and how did they deal with it? And how can that translate to the people who are trying to push themselves that next level? Maybe they've got something going on at home, but they're in your studio, they're pushing, they're pushing. How can you relate the two? What have you learned from those kids that you can part on us as adults who don't know what's going on either? <laughs> sure, sure. Um... So as a coach with these kids, I would spend more time with them than they're actually their teachers would. Um, you know, when you're in a class with a teacher, you're with them for 45 minutes a day. That's about it. They were with me for two, three hours a day at practice, bus rides to games, games on weekends, things like that. 
So I was, and I was an athlete myself as a kid and I learned more from my coaches and learn from being in that teamwork and well, um, sport environment um, than I actually did in the classroom. And, you know, these kids um, are going through so much um, as, as far as, you know, school, personal life, trying to think of their future, their goals and things um, that when they're with their coach and they're playing some, and they're, and, and again, they don't choose to go to school. They have to go to school, but they do choose to play that sport. They do want to play that sport. They sign up. So they want to be there and they want it to be a release. They want it to be a valuable experience for them that they enjoy, but they also can gain so much from. Um, it's exactly what I'm trying to do in the room with my adults. Um, life is hard for everyone. We're all fighting a battle. We're all dealing with some sort of adversity. Um, and I call it an escape, um, the room. Um, one thing we haven't discussed about that is very prominent with me, um, I am a recovering uh, heroin addict, and um, I am sober now. <laughs> I have <been. laughs> I know. That's a big thing. Just casually um, drop that in. Okay. Interesting. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, and I know that was a big one. Um, <laughs> And I'm open about it because it's such a hurdle that I've overcome. And I talk about it in class a lot. And um, people respect that about me. Um, and one of the steps that I do, um, another pun, um, is um, I go to meetings a lot. And meetings are where people, these are AA meetings, if you will. And this is where people can go one hour of the day, one hour of the week, um, put their problems aside and just talk about what they're dealing with and people who, that have, are going through the same thing, like-minded experiences, um, um, get so much release and so much peace, um, if you will, um, from that one hour together. Um, again, I like to parallel that to my classes a little bit, um, where for one hour of the day, 45 minutes of the day, guys, you can come here, okay? You can set your problems aside, all right? The one goal, the main goal uh, out of this class should be to grow, to, to take one step further for progress. Progress, not perfection. It's one of our big quotes in the, in, in the, the AA thing. Um, but, um, and we just, what I preach is I just want, Whatever it is, if it's physically, if it's mentally, spiritually, or anything, um, if you can improve on one little thing, um, then you've done right. It's a good investment of your time. And um, like I said, this room, this class, it's always there for you, just like a meeting will be um, always there for you. Um, we're always going to welcome you, no matter what mood you're in, what wavelength you're on that day. Um, we're always going to welcome you um and it's simple the one goal is we just want to make you happier and we want to make you healthier in one in one aspect of your life somehow so yeah wow i mean i'm all about that we are <laughs> going to have to talk about the h-bomb that you just threw in right so uh, <laughs> do you think i mean i've i've never been a drug addict thank goodness because I know it is a terrible plight when you fall into that sort of aspect of life. Do you feel like, because being a heroin addict and kicking it and not only doing that, but becoming so into fitness and having your own cycling studio and being as athletic, athletic as you are, that is a huge jump. That is a huge transition to go through. And do you think because you've done that, do you think that's maybe why you want to go that extra mile when it comes to spin? Because that is your, obviously your determination sure. has no bounds, it would seem. Sure. Do you feel like that is something that you try and, that maybe you have in your personality now that you've overcome that hurdle? Uh it's my motivation, 100%. Um, like I said earlier, we're all we're all fighting some sort of battle. For me, it's addiction. For others, it can be eating disorders. It can be um, problems at home with relationships or anything like that. Um, but that's my big, my big, um, my why, if you will. Um, and uh, it all comes down um, 
to self-control. It all comes down to discipline. Um, it all comes down to willpower. Um, and it's all, like I said, relative. Not all of us are drug addicts and things like that. Um, but we've had to overcome something um, that's been very tough on us. Um, and yeah, um, that is one big aspect that I think has made me strong in my um, in my career as a spin instructor and has been motivating me to take the next step to open up my own studio. Um, because at the end of the day, my why is I want to help people um, as much as I possibly can. Um, and I, like I said about authenticity, I'm, I preach about authenticity all the time. Um, that's my story. That's who I am. Uh, we all have a story. We all um, can learn from each other's story. Um, I preach about that constantly. And it's almost, it's almost a shame not to open up, not to talk about what your experiences are. Um, because um, no one can, if, if not, no one can really learn from them, you know? Um, and uh, um, I, 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 like I said, I, I talk about sharing um, your story, owning your story a lot. Um, because one, one thing I say a lot in class too is um, everyone, can experience the good times. Everyone can um, have a great time and everyone can celebrate when things are great. But what establishes, in my opinion, who we are as an individual and what our character really is, is how we handle the bad times and how we handle the obstacles and the struggles in our lives, because we're all going to deal with them. Um, so, and you know, I'm proud. I'm proud to be in recovery. Um, I'm, I'm proud to be able to share my story, um, that I'm still here. Um, and I, I really do think that I can help, help, um, people around me in the world the best way by doing something I love, which is, um, spinning, you know, but leading by example, sharing what I've been through and just hopefully, um, someone can relate, um, to that, you know, and see it as inspiration. Um, and then pay it forward, you know, share their story and, and then someone can be inspired by them. And, um, and I, and I'm, the reason I'm so open about it a lot is because I do want to have, like, I, like I said about these meetings, like how my class, like a meeting, I want to just foster this open, um, environment where people can be themselves. They can be, you know, I, I want people to be authentic. Um, I really want um, people I, to be inclusive and, and and not be afraid to be exactly who they are and owning their stories because again that's really what makes us different separates us is how we how we deal with our struggles. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's amazing that you you've said this because I love how open you are because so many people wouldn't be so many people would maybe you know, not be able to embrace the demons. So many people can't embrace their own demons. But what I find very inspirational talking to you is that if you hadn't have said, I wouldn't have known, which probably loads of people watching would feel the same. And when you talk about communication, when you talk about bringing people in and, and inspiring each other, I feel a lot of that is breaking stereotypes. We've all been born and raised to believe these certain aspects. And if someone was to say to me, heroin addict, I know the, the, the person that I jumped to in my mind's eye. And that person, never going to look anything like you do. That's for sure. That is not where that stereotype is in my totally. head. And so yes. you are so inspiring to shatter those stereotypes and to move the story forward. And I can only imagine that having that in your spin to have that communication is must be a whole breath of fresh air i mean you say the market's saturated i highly doubt that anyone like you is running any classes anywhere else you know what I mean? <laughs> but do you know what i mean and that is just to have that energy in the room to have that motivation and to have your story you know, really solidify the words that you're saying must be a fantastic environment to push yourself in because 
you're the physical representation of, of what that sort of determination can be. And I can imagine that your riders absorb off that, push off that, and you, you take the energy and move it forward. <laughs> so I'm very right. impressed. I'm very right. impressed. I'm going to stop gushing over you now, right? I'm going to stop gushing. Yeah. Because I'm just, I'm just gushing. I'm just like, oh my God, you're amazing. Okay. So, I mean, obviously keeping healthy, keeping on track is a motivation for you. What else, you know, if, if someone was coming into your classes, what do they need to have in their sort of heart and their soul that makes them really enjoy what you're, you're going to be delivering? Uh, sure. Um, uh, I just want people to be real. I want people to be themselves. Um, um, it doesn't matter, um, how you look, your age, your size, your color, anything like that whatsoever. Um, as long as you just give your best, your effort, um, have a good attitude. And I don't mean you have to be smiling and all happy go lucky all the time. Um, but just know that it's, it's, while you're on your own journey and while I want everyone to, to improve individually, um, I am trying to cater a teamwork thing and it isn't necessarily all about you, you know? Um, and um, one thing I was super proud, out, proud about at SoulCycle um, and was really a big motivator for me to do it, to open up my own place is, um, one of the newer studios at SoulCycle, I, I uh, was one of the main instructors at, most of my classes were at. And, um, you know, after a solid year there, um, the 15 minutes before class and 15 minutes after class, the community, the feel, the buzz was like I've never seen before. Um, and people are showing up to, to get better individually but they're showing up because they feel like they have to for their other teammates, you know? And um, and when they wouldn't show up, they'd get a call from someone else saying, where are you? Yeah. Yeah. Where the hell are you? Get down yeah. here now! <laughs> and, and, it's, and it might be necessarily not like, just looking after <laughs> each other, kind of, you know? Um, you know, are you okay? Is everything all right? That would be and, me. Uh, I'd be I'd be shouting at my friends. So I'm glad that all the people that you you teach are actually far nicer. I'm like, where the hell are you? Get your ass down here now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing this if you're not doing it. Come on. No, obviously, far nicer checking in, seeing if they're okay. <laughs> Both ways. Got it, Andy. Um, so I was real proud of that. Um, and that was, that wasn't me. You know, like all I'm doing is, is, is I'm I'm leading the class. Um, like I said, I'm proud of, of the atmosphere I'm kind of creating as far as, you know, owning, owning your shortcomings, you know, talk about those things. We all are dealing with every with things. We're all fighting a battle. We all made mistakes. Um, let's help each other get through them by, you know, talking and, and um, and sharing some of these misfortunes and stuff um, because it's only going to make us stronger. We're only going to learn from them. Um, and to see my riders bond, um, and, I, and I had nothing to do with it, um, that was one of my proudest moments because I, I could see that... Um, oh, shoot. I'm getting... Billy, no! Billy, no! <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get Billy back. Oh, Billy? Okay. I don't know where he's at. He may have left. Okay, so I'm going to sum that up. I, I, we've lost Billy. Technical issue. Oh, no, he's coming back. Billy, I was this close to picking up the phone, being like, where the hell are you? <laughs> Why are you going to get back on the, the Zoom? Are you okay? Did you need a, do you need a power charger? Do you need a bit of that? Oh, no, he's going to go again. Oh, my goodness. I have it. What's oh, going geez. on? I well, have it on. the end, though. So, I mean, we can call it there if you want. Uh, uh, well, I can finish this thought, I think. Yes, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, I was talking to myself. <laughs> I love so, it. Uh, but like I said, uh, just to finish, um, uh, I was 
I, I, not only are people getting an amazing workout and, and um, you know, they're, they're helping each other and, challenge, and, and improving individually, um, but something stronger, something bigger is being fostered and um, um, people are, are learning from each other, people are bonding, people are being inspired um, and they end up going home after the workout and they're strong, they're positive, and now they can pay it forward to their families and they can pay it forward to their friends. Um, and it's just momentum of positivity, positive energy, um, and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> No, it sounds amazing. I mean, you are an inspiration yourself for the fact that you can pass that forward by delivering something that that is going to reap those results, you know, going to or spin in general, I think is such an amazing way and vehicle of, of creating groups and, and finding fellow friends where you wouldn't normally. And the fact that you then take that with your story, with with the the style of your classes, trainings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I listen, so. trainings. <laughs> um, that, that it's going to foster even more of that, which I can imagine is uh, spectacular. So I've absolutely loved this interview today, Billy. This is, well, we've come to the end. I feel like we could go for another five hours, but uh, maybe another time. You never know. You can drop some other massive life changing bomb. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, what? oh what's happening? Um, but before we go, this is the time where you have to big yourself up. Tell everybody where they can find you, follow you on Instagram, all your tags, all your handles, lay it on me. Sure. Um, find me on Instagram at Billy Gaines with a Z, G-A-I-N-E-Z, Billy Gaines. Um, the name of the studio is called Gaines. We're just outside of Boston. The website is Gaines.com. Um, if you're really looking for... Um, the next level and as far as um we do offer beginners you know i do offer modifications um to, to beginners at all levels and things like that but if you just want to see what the next level is like and um if you want a raw intense real authentic positive high energy um experience and you really want um to also meet and bond with, um, like I said, real authentic people um, that with their sole purpose in mind is just to, to advance, to improve their, their lives uh, one step at a time and to foster and feed everyone else around them. If you wanna be part of a team, um, if you also um, wanna be part of a community, um, then check out the class. Yeah, you'll get all of that. Um, you'll feel empowered um, and, um, there is there is a next level for you there is a next place when you think you're ready for it so yeah amazing <laughs> Well, I interview everyone here and I've said, when I'm over in the States, I'll come over and I'll give it a go. But I've got a feeling I'm going to have to leave you till last because I'm not going to be able to hand you. I'm going to have to go around everywhere else, work up the strength, and then I'll be ready next level to hit your studio right there in Boston. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Billy, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. I wish you the best of luck with your studio. Delivering that next level, I have no doubt that you are going to be able to absolutely smash it. And yeah, let's catch up another time man and i'll i'll stalk you on instagram because i'm now obsessed with you so, <laughs> fantastic thank you so much i wish you all the best bye annie thanks so much